Ah, spring is in the air, and worms everywhere are looking for love. And I can tell you there's a whole lot of loving going on in the worm tower right now. Hello again, and welcome to a mid-May update on the Worm Tower. Uh, it's about two weeks since we last had a look at this. I've been feeding it every few days now a slightly increased amount of food. And what I want to do now is just check that it's all disappearing. Those couple of worms there are all that I found in the sump. I think there was a total of about six worms I took out of the sump. So very happy with that. That's a piece of the crushed eggshell that we put in. Um, remember, we're doing an egg watch for the... Uh, year that this little series is going to run and we'll see what kind of condition the uh, hand crushed eggshells are going to be in at the end of the year there's a tea bag we're also doing tea bag watch if you remember so we'll see what that looks like um it looks like the worms have been in it and eaten the contents which is good but we still have the tea bag itself now that's the side i fed some of the manure and i wanted to see if we had worms over there and we do it's something to keep in mind when you add a different type of food. I know it might sound a bit silly, but if the worms are used... Oh, now, hang on. There's um, an actual worm in the worm bag. You can see the outline of them there. Uh, I'll put them back. He might have a little friend in there with him, so I won't disturb them. Yeah, the, the, you can see some of the, the worms in the manure there. It's important to keep it in mind, especially in a small bin like this. A big bin isn't such a problem because the worms can move away from anything they don't like with ease. But with a small bin, if they need to move away, the only place they can move to is out of the bin. And it's important to keep in mind that if you have been feeding your worms on a fairly consistent type of food, so whether that's mixed vegetable scraps or uh, liquidized whatever, um, there's a cocoon there. Just keep an eye out as I'm scraping through the bin. You'll see lots and lots of cocoons, which is something I'm really happy about. It means the worms are starting to reproduce. And because the temperatures have gone up, gone up quite a bit, actually, in the last couple of weeks, I would expect to see a lot more production going on in the bin. And that's exactly what we're seeing. There's cocoons everywhere. And you'll also notice that this bin started off with cardboard and leaves, which was pretty rough. And it's starting to break down quite well it's looking more and more like what you would think of if you think about bedding in a worm bin there's a lovely another lovely cocoon yeah so what i was saying was the uh, if you add something different that the worms are not used to add a very small amount and only in one part of the bin so for example if you've never fed the coffee bin coffee grounds used coffee grounds and you want no problem with it but you want to add coffee grounds to the bin and you've never fed the worms coffee, coffee grounds, just add a very small amount in one corner and see how the worms get on with that. And it's the same if you're used to feeding your worms, uh, your own homemade worm chow, which could be a mixture of uh, meal, um, barley and uh, corn flour or something like that. And then you suddenly start to add in reasonably large bits of vegetable scraps just add a very small amount at a time again until the worms get used to it so i put a tiny bit of manure on one side and as you can see the worms have made their way over there they're quite happy in it in fact there's a couple of cocoons um in the manure so that's a good sign it, it just means i can put a little bit of more manure in for a mix now the reason i would want to do that is just to have a better mix in the final product. It's all going to end up as vermicompost. So the end product is as good as what you put in. So if you're looking for a, a good mix in your end product, make sure you put in a good mix. So leaves, um, lots of carbon-based stuff, lots of greens, uh, your, that's your food scraps, mostly what would be in the bin, bits of manure, whatever so it's all good it all creates a, a good mix in in the living soil amendment that your vermicost will be when it comes out at the other end so yeah as you can see cocoons absolutely everywhere so i'm very pleased with that i'm very pleased with the way the bin is breaking down uh, i think if you if you look at when we set it up uh, what it looked like and you look at it now 
you can see that it really is starting to turn into what you would typically think of as um, a worm bin. It's starting to look like a worm bin, I suppose, is what I mean. So we're going to give this a feed now in a second. Um, again, I'm slowly increasing the amount of food I'm giving it. And again, it's very important in a small bin like this that you slowly increase the uh, amount of food the worms are getting. And you make sure that most, if not all, of that food has is gone before you feed again. Now you saw me feed this two weeks ago and I fed it a few times in between and you can see apart from the, excuse me, outer skin of the melon there, there's um, really nothing left of any food. And they've, they've even eaten the contents of the tea bags and they're munching away in the manure. So don't worry about food having to constantly be in the bin as well because remember your bedding is actually bedding and food for the worms. So yeah, I'm very happy with the way this is looking. So we'll crack on and get it fed now. So this is what they can expect today. I'm obviously not going to feed this to the bin as it is. But again, if this was a much bigger bin, I, I could just uh, put, I'd probably wrap a few bits of newspaper around it and then throw it in. Because again, because this is freezing, they won't touch it, but they, they'll stay away from it till it thaws. Now there's bits of potato peel, bits of sweet potato skin, some turnip. That would take forever to break down in the bin. And banana peel there, which is reasonably quick, but that's a piece of um, turnip, I believe. So again, this is the kind of thing um, that makes me a big fan of the freeze-thaw method. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to defrost this and then squeeze as much water out of it as I can. And while that's defrosting, let's just take a look at the sump lots and lots of worm cast so there has been worms down here and moving around but like i said at the beginning i only actually picked up six out of this tray before i started filming so um again it's working very well now that's your worm cast that you're looking at there and there is a dip you'll hear the terms used interchangeably but that is worm cast proper worm poop mixed with nothing. You'll hear vermicompost referred to most of the time and that's because in a bin there's a mixture of the worm cast which is just the pure poop, there's uh, unbroken or partially composted material or unbroken down material and there's material that's been composted but hasn't gone through the worm. So if you harvest a bin with worms in it you'll have a mix of all the different types of compost and in the various stages. So that's what we mean when we talk about vermicompost as opposed to talking about pure worm casts. So you saw the liquid I squeezed out of that. I'm going to squeeze some more obviously before I feed the bin. And because this bin is actually looking wet, to be honest, somebody made a comment, I'm sorry I can't remember your name, but I will get round to replying to you in the next few days, and commented that when they looked at the last update I did, my bin looked a lot wetter than theirs. Theirs was moist. And should they wet the bin down more? The answer is no. As long as it's moist, the worms are happy. They'll be able to breathe through the skin and that'll keep them happy. Now you saw, I just ripped that little bit of cardboard there because I don't run the cardboard through a shredder. I leave it like that because the worms love those flutes in that type of corrugated cardboard. The glue is a kind of a starch-based glue, which they just love. They love it nearly as much as they do melon rind. So I just leave it roughly tor torn up I think I've put up bits of video um, where the, <laughs> there's just rows and rows of worms and single file down the flutes. It's quite funny to find, actually. So that's how much water's drained out of that. I'm going to measure it now in a second, and we'll just see. And I could squeeze a lot more out of it if I had time to wait, uh, which I don't. Now, that's the temperature of the bin. It's 16 degrees. I don't know how clear that's coming out, but it's 16 degrees C around 60 Fahrenheit. That's an absolutely perfect temperature for the worm bin, 16, 18, 20 degrees. You don't want much colder or much warmer than that. And the moisture level is showing at 6, so it's kind of halfway through. I don't believe that. I don't think that's accurate. I don't think it's, that meter reading is getting a, is, 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 uh, I don't think a meter is getting a, an accurate reading for, the, for that bin because it's too shallow. Um, so I've had to put it in at an angle and I don't think it's measuring the moisture content properly. You can see that bin is wet. It's not moist. 
Now it's not saturated, so again, and, and it's quite good having lots of leaves as bedding because there's no problem getting oxygen through the entire bed, which the worms need because of the structure of the leaves. But that bin is not moist, which is what the meter is showing. It is categorically wet. And you saw a small amount of overflow in the, in the sump. But I'm very pleased with the, the amount of liquid that was in there. This is a bit like when you go to a dog, you know, when you have a rash all week and you think it'll go and it doesn't go and you make an appointment on Friday to go to the doctor Monday. And then when you go to the doctor Monday and roll your sleeve up and say, look, the rash, Ooh, it's gone. It's a bit like that. I, one of the biggest issues I thought I was going to have and we'd be able to discuss in this worm tower setup was the problems I have always had managing worms getting down into the sump. And ever since I started this series, there's hardly any worms in the sump and there's hardly any moisture in the sump. And you saw the, the beginning videos when I did the introduction and I did some occasional videos last year when I was doing the uh, small, bin, um, small Worm Bin Weekly series. Uh, there was a couple of videos where I looked in on the worm tower and it's saturated. I mean, it was flooded, absolutely flooded. And since I started doing this series, it's been fine. It's the best I've ever seen it. So anyhow. So yeah, we, the bedding is 16 degrees C, just perfect. The bed is a little bit too wet for my liking, but not bad at all. I just wouldn't want to get any wetter than that. And that's why you see the shredded cardboard. It's dry cardboard. I haven't uh, misted it down because what I'm going to do now is uh, put that into the bedding when I add this food because this is going to add more water to the bedding and you can see there what I've squeezed out was about 125 mils almost a quarter of a pint and I could probably get half of that again if I had the time to wait around I'd just keep squeezing or run it through a, through a blender and, and let it soak for a bit to soak any excess moisture out so that's what's going into the bin now and in about four or five days I'll check on it and see have they eaten all that. And if they have, I'll feed again. So far, even this bin lives outside. There's no issue with uh, with f fruit flies or anything like that yet, which is which is good. But they're they're probably coming. Lots of springtails, as you saw. Uh, but I don't mind them at all because this bin lives outside. Now I know. Um, the um, worm lady is it has a lot of problems with. Uh, her bins indoors at the moment with uh, the crazy worm lady there's a link to her channel on, on on my front page she's got a lot of problems with her indoor bins at the moment with um, springtails but outside this bin lives outside it, I don't care about them really in the bin they don't bother the worms so I'm just moving aside some of the the moist bedding I'm adding the dry cardboard in roughly shredded just like that and then when I add the food that uh, bedding will that bedding will um, capture some of the moisture something else to keep in mind here the cardboard i'm adding to that is being added to what what is already a very heavily carbon based bedding so it's leaves shredded cardboard is how it started and now i'm adding slightly more cardboard that's not going to affect the temperature in the bin very much but if that was heavily leaning towards greens that bedding and I added a lot of cardboard to it that will rapidly increase the temperature of the bin and that sudden change that sudden increase in temperature could cause the world worm bin worms in the bin a problem so that's worth keeping in mind um, if you are adding something like cardboard to the bin it will accelerate um, the composting process but it shouldn't be an issue here in this particular bedding as it is at the moment for the simple reason it's very high, heavily carbon based as it is so I've just covered that with the uh, remaining of the cardboard that's the bin now living outside I'm just going to pull that piece of plastic over the top to stop any rain and I'll end by saying thank you for watching and I'll catch you soon